Greetings to you all you watching at this dialogue. The International Development Partners praise Ethiopia for its economic development. The International Monitoring Fund, IMF, is one of them. To talk about this and other related issues, Christine Lagarde, IMF Managing Director, is here with us. I'm Zakrilu with this edition of the show. Thank you so much uh, for taking time with ABC. Let's start with this. The preliminary report of the September 2017 acknowledged uh, Ethiopia's uh, economic uh, progress uh, despite the drought all over the country and the global price. But what are the findings behind for this reason? Well, our assessment of the Ethiopian economy is that it has uh, been growing uh, very well over the last uh, decade, decade and a half actually, and it has managed to reduce poverty um, in, in a quite significant way. I think this was a combination of uh, political determination to invest in infrastructure and uh, a, a belief that um, distribution of revenue across the board should be as inclusive as possible. Now, having said that, um, the population of uh, Ethiopia is vast uh, and the per capita GDP is still very low. So there are challenges ahead, but we believe that it's at a stage where it could actually really um, deliver in terms of continued uh, high growth and pickup of exports uh, rebalancing of um, its uh, balance of, of um, payment and, um, and hopefully a better domestic revenue mobilization. So we have a, a fairly um, positive judgment about the Ethiopian economy uh, if that economy goes in the direction of the second phase of development that has been identified by the authorities, uh, where there is clearly a focus on opening up markets uh, to the private sector, to more competition, to more productivity, to more innovation, uh, to eliminating the bottlenecks that you find here and there um, when there has been a strong and heavy involvement of state-owned only um, companies. So I think, I think it's, it's at a time of transport formation where a lot of the infrastructure has been addressed, not all of it, but there is clearly more roads better access to electricity than in many other countries at similar levels of development. Well, the export sector is, is said stagnant. What's the recommendation you know, for this challenge? You know, what, what we, we, we did recommend uh, that there be a devaluation of the currency in order to restore uh, the, um, the competitiveness. The government has decided a devaluation of 15% of the currency, which uh, we welcomed, and uh, we are recommending enough flexibility so that the currency can actually adjust and help um, local manufacturing, which means local employment, uh, better exports from Ethiopia to uh, other countries in order to rebalance you know, the balance of trade and, uh, and ultimately the balance of payment. Okay, moving on to this poverty uh, reduction strategy of the country. To, to begin with, what's your impression over that? And what will be the future relation with the IMF in this regard? Well, as I said, um, the Ethiopian uh, economy has helped reduce poverty significantly over the course of the last 15 years. So it has done a, a pretty good job at that, but there is still a lot to be done. Um, Ethiopia has, is a low-income country. The income per capita is low and there is a lot of ground to cover in order to raise the level of income for all Ethiopian. So we certainly hope that uh, by moving into the second phase of development, there is progress in that direction. And the IMF would support uh, that second phase of development and would be prepared to partner with uh, Ethiopia by way of technical assistance, by way of training, by way of medium term uh, fiscal planning in order to mobilize uh, revenue in the country. Mm -hmm. Any practical move uh, in regard to the visit to the country? My visit was the first visit of a managing director of the IMF in 72 years of partnership between Ethiopia and the IMF. It was largely overdue and I'm very pleased that I could come and visit and meet with so many Ethiopian people and uh, 
decision makers as well. But there is no plan to have a program, there is no plan of special financing uh, with Ethiopia because the, uh, the Ethiopian authorities are developing their reforms and are putting in place their program. Ethiopia is one of the top emerging countries in Africa. Uh, there is also the other side of the story. The Human Development Index is said now parallel with the economic progress. So what would, what would be your comment on that? You know, as I said, uh, a focus on inclusive growth, quality growth, uh, making sure that the infrastructure responds to the needs of private sector um, expectations in order to locate investment in Ethiopia. I went to visit yesterday the uh, East, Eastern Industrial Park, which is about 35 kilometers uh, outside of Addis. It's really fascinating to see how a good road uh, access to electricity, uh, water, waste management made available by a governmental program actually attracts investors from China, from the Netherlands, from various corners of the world to actually produce in uh, Ethiopia and to use uh, labor force from Ethiopia. This is the beginning of a process. I know that other industrial parks are uh, planned for the future and I think it's an interesting development in order to localize uh, development and attract private sector investors. The trend of the, the international development partners assisting Ethiopia is kind of increasing. What do you think is the reason behind? Is it the, uh, the country's potential to return the loan in France or uh, the economic development or is there any other reason for that? I think there are many institutions that are riveted uh, to the uh, 2030 uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And I think there are many countries that are keen to reach those goals. If everybody is um, sort of closing ranks and focused on that from their respective perspective. You know, when Unilever decides to set up a, a, a manufacturing lane, line in uh, the Eastern Industrial Park, they're doing that because they have the prospect of accessing a large market, but they're also very keen to participate in the industrialization process, I'm sure. The way in which we want to help with training, with technical assistance, with uh, capacity building is also with that aspiration. And uh, if there is good governance, little corruption and good domestic revenue mobilization, I'm sure that it will be conducive to further development. One last remark, if, if you may. Uh, that touch, you know, your feeling about Ethiopia while during your visit or anything you want to say? Well, it has been um, a tremendous opportunity to meet very nice, very warm, very hospitable people, very noble and elegant people as well. Sometimes, you know, you are uh, touched by little things. Uh, this afternoon I went to visit the uh, Fistula Hospital that was set up by uh, uh, Dr. and Dr. Hamlin and to see those 550 nurses, doctors, uh, uh, support staff helping with dealing with the maternal health uh, of those uh, who have given birth and have suffered as a result is, is really um, touching everybody's heart and uh, many many instances of, of goodwill, of uh, uh, paying attention to other human beings, which I have come across in this country. So I'm very grateful uh, to the uh, hospitality of the Ethiopian people and the Ethiopian uh, government. Thank you so much. It's Thank been you. A pleasure in the Well, dear viewers, that wraps up what we have for you in this edition of the show. Join us again next week, same time, for another edition of Addis Dialogue. This is Aak Lulu along with our cameraman. Thank you for staying. Bye-bye.